Next question is from Coach Carruthers. Stuart McGill has talked about breathing mechanics being an important step indicator of back health. How would you incorporate breathing into training? Breathing is uh, extremely important. If you don't breathe, you die. No, uh, <laughs> all joking aside. Well, this is to your point that you were just making up about your TVA. Uh, yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, the transverse abdominis is, and part of that is the diaphragm and like, what is it, 28 other muscles that surround the spine mm -hmm. and support that. And so your ability to control the, your breathing and to draw that in is is your internal weight belt. Yeah, yeah. Your, your, how you breathe is very important when you are exerting maximal force, especially Especially. So like Olympic weightlifters, for example, practice something called the Vasalva mm -hmm. maneuver. This is actually an important part of them generating power. And essentially what it is, is they breathe in deep. They get a full diaphragmatic breath down into their belly. Then they hold that breath and they brace everything around that air in their lungs and in their, uh, in, with, the, with the, their diaphragm. And that produces a lot of stability. So proper breathing with heavy lifting is definitely important to stabilize and strengthen the spine. As far as regular lifting is concerned, you know, I think when people overthink this, sometimes you get problems yes. because it's like, you know, if, if I'm training a client and I'm having them think about form and technique and watch your hips and look at your knees and make sure your feet are th doing this and have good posture, and then I throw into it, all right, I want you to breathe out here, breathe in here, do all it's like, oh my God. Yeah, I got to think about breathing now, and now I don't know what the hell's going on. So, usually when clients would ask me, what about breathing? I would say, just breathe normally. Yeah. You know, just breathe normally and you're fine. I experienced the same thing. Cause, and here's the thing with trainers like, we go to a lot of these, uh, you know, certifications and we learn these new techniques and modalities. It gets us all excited and we want to apply it to our clients. Like, uh, you know, and, and that's something I had to learn too, because, uh, we had Wim Hof here and I went through the course and, and was really excited about, you know, hyper oxygenation and like, let's, let's work on these types of short breaths and get our body, get our lung capacity up and, you know, do diaphragmatic breathing. And, uh, you know, here's how I can weave this into the training session. And, you know, and it has its place for, uh, in terms of calming the body down, calming the system down, like de-stressing and, uh, lots of benefits to it. And there's no doubt that, you know, it works, but, uh, you know, trying to weave that into now, uh, the training session, the exercises, it really convoluted everything, it made everything really complicated and the clients would get really frustrated. And we, and, and so you just got to consider like how much you, you really need to be conscious of and let the unconscious okay. kind of take over. What I would do with, with clients, and then you could try this yourself. When I would focus on breathing, that's all we were doing. I didn't combine it with exactly. lots of movement. Yes. So one way you can practice full diaphragmatic breath is to lay on your back on the floor. You place one hand on your chest, one hand on, right on your belly button, and then take a deep breath. And what you want to do is you want the hand that's on the belly button to rise first and rise fully before the chest, the hand on the chest moves. If you don't breathe this way, it's going to feel weird. And most of us don't. Most of us breathe into our chest. So when you take a deep breath, it all goes into the chest and the hand on the belly button doesn't move much. So what you do is you got to slow down, focus on fully using your diaphragm, making the hand on the belly move first and fully before the chest uh, hand does. And what you'll find through this full diaphragmatic breath is it causes you to really chill and relax. And in fact, I actually have had this happen at least five times where I'll take a client super stressed out, everything's going crazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, we're going to spend 10 minutes on diaphragmatic breathing. And I would take them into a, a room, kind of dark. They lay on the floor. I do this practice with them. And at least five times I had clients start crying. Yeah. And it, it literally, they would sit it's there. really weird. I've had the same did thing. Same thing? Yeah. All of a sudden they start crying. And, and, and it, the reason why I think they started crying is because they allowed their body to relax, process whatever stress or feelings they were having. Mm -hmm. And it just came out in emotion. And it was always kind of interesting and strange. And then they felt better yeah. and then we work out, but it's a great practice. I recommend diaphragmatic yeah. breathing uh, before sleep. I think, I think too, like the real value of it is when you get a new client and you're going through the assessment process, you're trying to really teach them uh, how to, uh, you know, understand their body even further. And you're going through posture, you're going through all these types of assessments, but this is one of those things like 
too, if they can learn that, you know, from the very beginning, they get an understanding of when to apply that when they're overstressed and, you know, all these things. So it's like a, it's a great teaching uh, tool and it's something that's very valuable, but you got to learn when and, and how to use it. I found it extremely valuable to do it when you, just like what you said, Justin, during like my assessment or the first week I was training a client doing things like, you know, box breathing or the draw on maneuver and getting them to understand how to activate, draw on their TVA and, and tighten their core up. Once you've done a good job, like I remember I had clients and each one's going to be different, right? But the ones that were really good, I could be in the middle of working out and I could say, activate your core. I could tell them that because I already did the training yeah. early on. Yeah. And so I could incorporate it into training once you do that. So if you do it at the very beginning to get them to understand what it is you're asking them to do when you say draw in or activate your TVA and they're like, oh, okay, you do that draw and maneuver type of exercise. They get it. They get the concept now. They understand why you're having them do that to support the spine. Then when you're doing a bit over row or a seated row, or you're doing an extra, getting ready to squat and you say, yeah, before we go into the squat, you know, activate that core. They'll know what you mean because you've done the, you've done the prerequisites. And then the other place I think I probably use it the most is uh, and I think Sal, you just said this right with the with, at nighttime, right? Mm -hmm. Getting them to calm down. So and and maybe that's because it that's where it's added the most value for me. Like so, I've mentioned on the show before that um, I have a really hard time settling my thoughts down uh, at nighttime. And one of the things, and I remember this was after Justin went through Wim Hof, and we were we were a lot of discussion was around breathing. Uh, I noticed that uh, at nighttime when my my brain was going 100 miles an hour, I also noticed I was having these like short, like mm -hmm. uh, you, I wasn't aware of it because I was so into my thoughts, but I realized that the way I was kind of breathing was not normal and slow and controlled. And that's when I taught Katrina how to box breathe and we would box breathe together. And then still to this day, you know, she has this crazy weird ability to be able to tell when I'm thinking, even when it's silent in the room, and all of a sudden she'll kind of elbow me and be like, let's breathe together, and then we'll do like five to ten breaths, and then I can literally feel my heart rate like completely mm -hmm. settle down, and then I can get into my get into my sleep. Otherwise, I'll be racing all night. Yeah, you know who naturally uh, belly breathes or breathes, watch little kids? Little kids don't, they haven't learned yet the chest breathing, the whatever, and you'll watch them play and run around, and when they stop, you'll see them fully breathe into their belly Big belly out yeah in, you know yeah whereas when we are you know we're all stressed out we're like oh, all in our chest yeah, we're Bre trying to keep it in yeah breathing's really important it's also a pattern just like any muscle muscle recruitment pattern if you get stuck in a pattern you can get stuck breathing only one particular way and some forms of breathing are great for helping you in a stressful situation and others are great for helping your body relax and if you get stuck in one and it's typically the stressed out breathing you are literally sending a signal to your body that says you're stressed. Even if you're not, just by breathing that way, your body thinks. Haven't they connected that to anxiety? Absolutely. Yeah, they've connected. I mean, a lot of people that are really, really anxious. Uh, this is like one of the best things you do. So if you have a yeah. client, so there's this is and this this is what makes good trainers, right? This is where you adre ad uh, adjust programming. Client comes in, Adam. I want to lose thirty pounds. I want to. That's like the main. That's all the thing they're telling you about. You're going through training. Then you find out like this person is just completely drowning in anxiety all the time. Like, and then now a whole workout routine could be all about that. Totally. Cause, and, and that could be life changing for that person to get them to understand that, Hey, when you have these moments mm. of anxiousness and feeling anxiety, stop what the fuck you're doing and do these exercises I'm teaching you right now. It could be life changing for someone. So it's a, a an example of where this now would uh, t completely supersede whatever program I had going on because that's such a big deal in their Gotta life. Bring your body back to homeostasis first. Totally. Look, my, Pump is recorded on video and audio. So if you want to watch us and not just listen to us, go to YouTube. Also, in this episode, we mentioned a couple bundles. Bundles are where we combine multiple maps, programs for specific goals. I talked about the Fit Mom bundle. Uh, Adam mentioned the RGB bundle. You can find both of those bundles at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Go check those out. Also,